Hello, hello, Cupid folks. How y'all doing? I am Ken, the CEO and founder of Cupid, and I am here with the lovely Cara Bell. Cara, how are we feeling today? Oh, I am amazing. I know I was my energy was a little low on Monday. I have recouped. I'm ready to go. Let's finish this week out strong. Awesome. Yeah, it's launch week, Kara, and we have so many people tuning in today. We've had over 2,000 new matchmakers sign up for Cupid this week. So we are rocking and rolling. Um, I see some of you guys. I'm pulling your comments into the actual live video. If this is your first time joining us, please say hey. Tell us you know, your first name, who you are, and uh, let us know where you're actually watching from. Uh, we have matchmakers in all 50 states now, Kara. So everywhere across the USA, we've got folks coming in to do matchmaking work. Awesome. Um, if you've never used YouTube Live before, Kara and I are live. So you can ask us questions live. Today's session is going to be entirely around the Cupid app. Uh, Kara's been working with me for a very long time. Welcome, Eric from Spokane, Washington. Ooh. Thanks, guys. Do we have um, any international people yet? We need to work on the USA? international, reaching out yeah. internationally. Oh, we're going to. We just can't do it yet because we're only launching in USA and Canada for now. But that's okay. It's okay. We're going to get there. Um, wow, we got so many folks. We have Meliko. We have uh, Denver. Joanne from Denver. Love Denver. Wow, from Napa, California. We've got Napa. everybody. Look at this. We got a lot of folks coming in. Thank Oregon. you guys so much for tuning in. Wow. Yeah, we, we do have a whole bunch of folks. People traveling internationally. Gosh. Oh, we have Felix from Kenya. Ken Welcome, Felix. So nice to meet you. All right. Awesome. Nice. So guys, um, if you've never heard of Cupid before, if this is your very first live training, hi, I'm Ken. I'm the one who built it. The quick and dirty story is uh, I've been single for a very long time. I'm 32 years old. I've been using swipe-based dating apps. That's Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, those kinds of dating apps for about a decade. I got tired of it, um, and I started to learn about the matchmaking business. And so we built Cupid to change the matchmaking business. If you want to learn about the matchmaking business, please listen to the Cupid podcast. Um, Kara, you were on the podcast, weren't you? I was. I was uh, Bella Claire, my little sister. She invited me to to spend some time with her on her podcast. And I, I've heard some good feedback from it. I have not still to today. You taken haven't the listened time to it? To, it's so funny. <laughs> you know what it is to like to listen to yourself or to see yeah, yourself yeah. on video sometimes? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I'll, I'll buckle well, down and listen to it tonight. <laughs> well, let me say, um, just as a hint, so we are launching on Friday, right, Kara? So we have a whole bunch of surprises coming up on Friday. Hopefully you guys can tune in. Um, come on in. Thank you, Terry. So happy to have you here with us. I'm glad we agree. Swiping does suck. So thank you for those comments, guys. Um, I want to let you know, please do tune into the Cupid podcast. Bella Claire is a matchmaker with Cupid. Tune into that if you have the time to listen to a few episodes. We might be having some trivia and some giveaways on Friday. Uh -huh but you're going to need to know some information for those podcasts. Um, Friday, oh, Joey, let me answer your question. We okay. always do our trainings at 1 p.m. EST. They're always live, but you can watch them later on YouTube. So, Kara, I don't want to mess around. How about we get right into the training today? I know we have a lot to cover. We do. Um, Let's get into it, because this is going to be extremely helpful for um, everyone and just navigation of the app. Yeah. Good. And and uh, all, for, all you guys watching, oh, Ashley says she has a snow day today. Gosh, we're in Florida. I wish we no. had snow. It's it's seventy five degrees here. Eek. Yeah, Goodness. we don't wear we don't wear shoes here, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. So this is the Cupid app. Now, um, please remember, guys, we're in the development area. So <clears throat> those comments. So happy to have you guys here. Please ask questions as you go. Mm -hmm. But basically, Kara and I are going to talk through um, strategy around using the Cupid app. Uh, right now, this is a test system. So as you can see, some of these pictures are food. So obviously. You know, Kyle is not actually this plate of meat, right? But this is just us, you know, prepping the system ready. Um, your system will look very similar to this. It'll just have real photos and real people. So I'm going to kind of talk you through some of the main components of Cupid to help you understand once you get into the app. Of course, once you join, you'll create a profile. This will be pretty seamless. But basically, Kara, I want to come in and talk about some of the core features today. Does that, that sound good to you? That sounds amazing, Ken. Cool. And uh, for all you guys watching, I'm still watching those comments, so I'll try to pull them in if you have questions, but I'm just going to go ahead and go, and Kara and I will kind of have a conversation. And if you don't know, Kara has been a matchmaker for several years, has had amazing success, so she's been instrumental in helping us build this company. So Kara, thank you so much for all your contribution. We're launching on Friday. I could not be more excited. <laughs> thank you for, for doing this on behalf of 
all of us millionaire matchmakers, soon to be millionaire matchmakers, we thank you for, for giving us a place to bring our business and be um, business owners to, to yeah. finally, you know? So, I love it. Thank you. Of course. So as we're looking at the Cupid app on your screen right now, what we're basically seeing, team, is that, and this is the browser version, so it'll look obviously different on your actual phone. Pretty similar to this, though. First thing I want to call attention to is this nav bar on the bottom. So if you can see my little cursor, you'll see the Cupid logo will always bring you back to this dashboard. This dashboard is meant to be where you always come back to, like the center of the app. Think about it like a Facebook wall or like the thing you return to, your Gmail inbox, kind of something like that. You'll see that you can access the singles directory. We won't do that now, but I'm going to kind of go over all the pieces. Um, you can also see those notifications. So I intentionally did this. So I have not completed my Stripe onboarding. Now, Kara, will you tell uh, everyone what Stripe is? Are you pretty familiar with Stripe? I am. So it's a, it's a very seamless payment processing um, platform. It's going to allow yep. you guys to get paid in a timely manner. Um, it takes about literally two minutes to set up. Um, if you just go to Stripe, it will ask you for all of your information. I think it will allow you to, to transfer funds to a bank account or a debit card. I yep. went mine to my debit card because I just didn't have my routing information. But sure. usually that's tied into your account anyway. So very quick and convenient. You want to make sure that you set that up. Otherwise, you're not going to get paid for your efforts. So, And by the way, how we built Cupid... <clears throat> so team, whenever you're watching this, um, you will not show up on our matchmaker directory as on the single side until you actually um, finish your Stripe onboarding. So you do have to finish that process. So make sure whenever you join Cupid, you're going to go through, you're going to complete this process and get it done. We're not going to do it now because it will be personal bank information. But when you join Cupid, you'll see there'll be, a, there'll be all kinds of prompts. There'll be, you know, do you want to become a matchmaker? You'll see inside. So we have the directory. We also have our clients. So once you have a client who's subscribed um, and how they would subscribe is they would find you on the matchmaker directory. But since we're logged in as a matchmaker, we're just going to view our own profile. So this is what your profile will look like. So you'll have your name, some little matchmaker information. You'll have a little bit about why I'm a matchmaker. And then what's your methodology? Um, you can see here that we have these little pill buttons. So on all of our profiles, you'll see that we have these pill buttons for you to quickly assess someone. So Almost any of any of the things that you have filled out on the onboarding are going to be here. So you can see this person works as a property manager. Um, let me answer a question really quickly. Yes, um, you cannot do any of this until Friday. It's not tomorrow. This app will be launched on Friday. So we'll welcome you all to the app on Friday. So <clears throat> pill buttons will give you all the information you need, religion, location, all that good stuff. Right, Kara? Awesome. Then next, you'll be able to see your clients. So if someone, and obviously this will look a lot different when it has someone's real face and not just some food. Um, so right. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to see the clients that work with them. And you'll be able to see some pictures of those, of those people. This is my own profile. And how I got there is this little thing called the hamburger menu. So this is basically how you access all your settings. Privacy policy. You can even join our Discord server. If you're not already in the Discord server, please do join us. We have over 1,000 matchmakers on our Discord server. But let me come back to the to the dashboard, talk about some other pieces. Whenever you schedule meetings or someone wants to interview you to become their matchmaker, you're going to have a little card that shows up right here. It'll tell you the time and the date, and you'll always have that meeting on Cupid. So, Kara, one of the things we are obsessive about at Cupid is your own privacy, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it is your client going on a date with a match that you've set up, or, Kara, it is you interviewing a potential client all of these interactions can happen on Cupid via voice or video chat. So what, me, what that means is you're never worried about matching your client with someone. That person that matched being a little crazy, you vetted them, you tried, but who knows, right? Someone gets mad, someone says something offensive, something goes wrong. You've never had to give out your client's personal information, right. no phone numbers, no anything, and all they get is a first name. So you're basically your client and your match get to choose after they've had their first date on Cupid voice or video date, then they can decide, okay, I'm ready to disclose some more, or maybe they want a couple dates on Cupid mm -hmm. to get to know this person, more realistic experience. So same thing with matchmakers. Um, you're going to have meetings with potential clients and they'll pop up right here. Okay. Sound good? Yes. Um, next piece is your tasks. So something that we built inside Cupid is so important. So let's say Kara, you know, you go to a, uh, let's say you went to brunch, right? 
And you want to follow up because you met um, this awesome person at brunch and you're reminding yourself, okay, I should probably, you know, when I have some time this Sunday or next Sunday, I should follow up, um, follow up with Jackie oh. about matchmaking, right? You met Jackie at, um, and, and Jackie might be, you'll be able to set the severity. I know it looks a little weird here, but let's just call it critical. Um, and maybe this person was actually, you're not even trying to get them as a matchmaker. Uh, sorry, as like a client. You want to match them with Kyle, your client. Okay. So you now have a task system here that's going to show up. You can easily finish those tasks or bring them back, but you'll be able to edit this. And the whole point is, matchmakers, we want you to run your whole business from Cupid. So task management system here, this is your basic dashboard. You have your directory and we can pop into here and actually see all the different singles. Um, this is amazing. This yeah, is amazing yeah. because, you know, some of the companies that I've worked with previously, um, the CRM system, well, they, number one, they didn't have a CRM system. It was just kind of like maybe Google Docs were shared right. with me. There was no sure. place for me to really put my notes. And I found myself having to kind of devise my own CRM system to stay organized. So mm -hmm. this is going to be key for you guys um, to stay organized. As long as you take two minutes, update things in real time, this is going to keep you organized so that you can seamlessly work with your clients. I totally agree. And um, we built in chat here for you. So whenever you're working with a client and you don't necessarily want to give them a call, you don't want to give out your phone number, you can say, hey there, you know, how did that date go? And maybe you spell date correctly, right? Uh, you'll always have some information. You'll get notifications whenever someone responds. This all works in real time. Amazing. The important piece here is you have the ability to communicate with your clients and prospective matches. Now, let's go into that singles dashboard. So right here, a singles database. And as you can see, guys, this is the test environment. So a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. is not real. So just understand this will look a lot different on Friday when you log in for real. But let's just take someone like Steven Sorrell. He's one of our favorite test users, right? So how we got here was we went to the single database looking for people. We found Stephen Sorrell. And Kara, you and I were talking about this before we started. We are especially sensitive to looking, to trying to have our profiles be nice and big. Yeah. Matchmaking should be an efficient business, should be simple. We have the names on here, the information, because we're the matchmaker. We get to have more access. Our clients and the matches will not see full names, but we will. We will also see a lot of information like their full job, their age in here. And of course, we can always filter this out, right? So we can pop into the filters. Oop, I clicked too fast. <laughs> we can pop into the filters. We can say, I only want to see men ages, you know, Ooh. 25 to 70. Oop, see me messing it up too fast. And there we go. So we can filter through everything. We can also pop in locations. So we can make proximity based. So we say like, we only want, for example, Orlando, Florida, and we want within a hundred miles. Sorry, this is what happens when you work on a browser. A couple <laughs> hundred miles of Orlando, Florida, right? And there happens to be no singles in that range. That's okay. We just go back and delete that and go right back to our search. Gotcha. Now, Kara, I want to talk about that real quick because this is an important piece of Cupid. Um, we, uh, I want to, I want to talk about like singles. So, Kara, whenever I get a client. Whose responsibility is it for us to actually, like, so I get a client, Stephen Sorrell hires me, right? Mm -hmm. Whose responsibility is it to find matches for Stephen? Absolutely your responsibility. If Stephen Sorrell hired you, then he believes in your abilities as a matchmaker. There's something about you or your matchmaker profile that really resonates with him. So right. then you are completely responsible for um, servicing, so to speak, Stephen. Right. And that's an important piece I want to highlight. Now, I don't see any comments, um, guys. So I, I just want to make sure the comments are still working on YouTube. The last one I saw was Friday. So anyone have any questions? Everyone's still watching on YouTube. I'm, I'm worried the comments might be broken. Um, I'm hoping, hoping they're not. I'll check in that in just a second. Okay. Coming back to what Kara just said, the fact is that as matchmakers, it is our job. Okay, good. They're still working. Good, Joanne. I'm, everyone's just intently watching. So... Um, <laughs> So as a matchmaker, it is our job to actually find potential matches. But there's actually three words that we use inside of matching at Cupid. Those are the three S's. That's to search, to screen, and to select. And the idea is we're going to search for matches 
online and offline. Okay, everyone's paying attention. Sorry, guys. I really appreciate it. It's okay. <laughs> I was just so worried. The We're here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You guys got quiet for a while. We were, yeah, you did. We, I was we were scared. Yeah. Watching. So <clears throat> you're going to search, screen, and select. So, of course, one of the beauties of Cupid, and like Kara can talk to you a little bit about this, but one of the beauties of Cupid is because it's thousands of matchmakers working together to invite singles to a single platform. I get to use Kara singles and she gets to use mine. And let's talk about why that's really attractive. And I wanna show you kind of what that looks like because of course we can see someone's profile, but more importantly, do you see here below where we see that Elizabeth, a matchmaker actually asked a question about this person and this all gets to happen asynchronously. What that means is you see, she asked on the 14th, he responded on the 16th. We know that it is not necessarily convenient to expect someone to immediately jump onto a call and Kara, I think on the podcast um, with Bella Claire, you talked a little bit about how it used to be. So it used to be you had to schedule Zoom calls for every single person. Is that how it was? Ken, okay, so I, for those of you that don't know, I had a base of about 62 clients. Wow. And the way <laughs> that I would search, screen, and select clients is that once I would go through profiles, I would see potential um matches for my clients, I would have to send them a note. I'd have to wait for them to respond. And then we would have to schedule a Zoom call. So people are busy. That could have been a week. It could be two weeks that I'm waiting for that person to schedule. And then I have to screen them. I did a like a 40 minute screening on Zoom with them. That's you so talk much about time, Kara. Exhausting. I literally yeah. would do like a hundred Zoom screenings a week just to be able to narrow in to get the right picks for my clients. So it was extremely time consuming. And Got this it. is going to allow you guys to be able to do probably tenfold the amount of matches that I, I did because my time was focused on waiting for people to schedule Zoom calls with me. Right. And to yeah. hope they show up, right, Kara? And to so hope that they don't show up and that they don't. <laughs> need to reschedule and that <laughs> they're actually going to turn the camera on. Um. So let's talk about what that looks like inside of Cupid. So remember, um, for all of you who are brand new, I know there's a lot of you newbies out there. Your job is to do three things, search, screen, and select. So you obviously can use our database to search, but you're also going to invite people to Cupid with your own unique link. We're going to talk about that a lot on Friday. We're actually going to like obsess on that fact because we're going to talk about the different rewards you get for inviting people to Cupid. Um, we do have a prioritized matchmaker list. We call them the active matchmakers. Those are people who invite a lot of singles to Cupid. And of course, by inviting singles, we want to reward you as a platform because every single Kara invites helps my business, might be a match for my client and vice versa. Every single I invite might be a match for Kara's business because we're all in this together to help each other. And that I will say is probably one of the biggest differences of Cupid versus all other matchmaking services. Now, searching online, offline might be at the grocery store, might be on Cupid app, right? Screening, that's the next question. So Kara just mentioned, we are spending so much time previously, voice, physical, you know, actually like through a Zoom call. What you do on Cupid is you do a screening. So what you'll do is you'll say, you know, Steven, are you a big fan of cats? Why am I asking this? Well, maybe my client is allergic to cats and I need that question answered. And as you'll see, it shows up first. So wow. this is all date organized and you'll always get a time and a date as to when someone responds to something. And so if you go through someone's profile and you see that they haven't answered a lot of questions, that already tells you as a matchmaker, maybe I shouldn't waste my time on this person right. because they're not responsive and they're not getting back to people. Now, I will tell you, you also as a matchmaker have the ability to edit your question. Let's say you made a typo, that's okay, right? Or you can actually delete your question. So you felt like something was wrong with what you said or, or maybe it was a little insensitive. So you just wanna delete it. Now, the difference is you will not be able to um, delete it once they respond. So that, that client has chosen to actually keep it on their page. Um, the developers are actually literally editing the app as I'm talking. So sometimes things will break. <laughs> <laughs> but we you know, get a lot done by because Friday. a lot of times, you know, there, there may have been just uh, a time where I had a possible match for a client and I had to schedule the zoom call just to get that one question answered. 
So the fact that I'm able to just send over a quick text and get that in real time and not have to wait for weeks to get one question, I think is pretty nice, right? Mm -hmm. Well, especially here, as you see, so we can see our tasks. So right here is your little like action bar. So first thing is questions. That's your screening questions. Next thing is tasks. So you can actually set a task in a profile. So, you, you know, whenever you're screening, you have 10 clients, you might screen 100 profiles in an evening. Maybe some of them you really liked. Maybe some of them you didn't. You asked some screening questions you didn't. But maybe you want to set up a task to remind yourself because I really think this guy's interesting. So I want to set up a reminder. I also might decide to add a note to say, like, um, maybe allergic to cats. Mm -hmm. This is entirely private, and I'm going to show you where this shows up later, but this is just for me. So okay. maybe you had a chat with them, or maybe, you know, you were at brunch with your client, or you're talking to your client, you showed them this profile, and they had an opinion about this. And so, you know, you want to keep something, you want to log something, maybe another matchmaker, maybe actually a really great example is think about, you know, Kara, you matched them with your client. They weren't a great match, but they are a really great candidate for someone else. You don't want to lose that profile because as Cupid gets bigger, there's going to be hundreds of thousands or millions of profiles. Right. So leaving yourself some notes will be useful. And the final, and I would say most important piece, Kara, as you start building your like list is you might say, Steven Sorrell is a great match for um, Cassidy, right? Mm -hmm. So you might make a Cassidy list. And this is going to be used all kinds of different ways, but I'll kind of show you where we can find this. But now we can see that Stephen is on the Cassidy list. And I'll show you right now where that goes. So this is the, the profile that we have. Now, the most important piece is the actual next S. And that S is to select. So remember, three S's of Cupid. Search, screen, and select. Um, we have a few uh, comments I want to answer real quick. Tor asks, does this apply to non-FO non-monogamous clients? Can uh, couples sign up to find dates? The answer is we have not planned for this. Um, I would absolutely encourage you to um, work with a client. It's totally fine for us. We're obviously we have two gay male founders, so we're super like pro this kind of opportunity, but we have not built it for couples. So a couple would have to create an individual profile and be very, very clear about this. And so how you could do that tour is you could actually ask questions on their profile and make sure as a matchmaker you ask the question and have them answer, you know, do you have any sexual proclivities? Are you ethically non-monogamous? And make sure those questions are answered on their profile. So there's no deception of how that works. That's a, that actually is a great fan. question because, you it's know, a great we, question. we talked, um, I think, was it last week about uh, polyamorous um, relationships, relationships and if people right. felt comfortable in, right. in adapting that as your, their niche. So just right. by that question being asked tells me, guys, there's, there's a niche for that. Yeah, there sure is. So the next piece we're going to talk about is up here. So as you can see, you can pop through photos really easily. And um, we only allow six photos right now. In the future, we'll do videos. Um, we're going to have a lot of pieces in the future. But just understand, we're just starting. So we're getting our training wheels on. We're just getting rolling. If you want to see the gallery to see all the photos easily, you can pop into here. You can also um, pop back to the profile. Boop. You can also send a message. So if you want to chat with this person. Now, the difference of chat is this is a private one-to-one -one message. So you can say, hey there, you know, I want to get to know you a little better, but I don't want to necessarily ask this question on your profile. Remember, there are some things, for example, ethical non-monogamy might not be a thing that this person really wants on their profile, but maybe they're open to it. You decide, you're a matchmaker. Remember, if you go to cupid.io right now, what does it say? People match people better than algorithms. Use your common sense, use your intuition, use your wisdom. Now, I want to see if this will work on the test side. Um, we do have the ability to schedule a actual conversation with Stephen Sorrell. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but basically this is Stephen Sorrell's calendar. So if I go back, so let's say um, I really like Stephen Sorrell. He's been really responsive. We had a great conversation. I might go to this little video icon because I want to schedule a meeting. And these are the times that Stephen's usually available. Mm -hmm. Now we can also have this when we're actually connecting um, our client and our match. But maybe this is me as a matchmaker. I want to actually have a conversation with Stephen Sorrell. So I look at Stephen's calendar. And I say, oh, 7 a.m. on this date works really well for me. I decide it's going to be a video or an audio meeting. And I can propose a meeting to Stephen. 
It'll go to his calendar. Let's see if it'll actually show up here. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes, again, development environment. So what just happens a quick now? Question. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so not only do the matchmakers have schedules, so that the clients can take a look at the matchmaker schedules to see when it's convenient for them to book um, a time with a matchmaker. So are you saying that the singles in the database also will have their own calendar that they'll set up, letting the matchmakers know their availability? Exactly, Kara. So the whole idea here, y'all, oh is gosh. that we want we want to think about time. It's probably the most important thing about matchmaking. Exactly. Everything comes back to time. What is the one resource that connects Carabelle, Ken Barton, and Jeff Bezos? We all have the exact same amount of time on this earth. And so if we can save more of that time and we can limit it and reduce it, we're solving problems. So Kara, let's jump forward and actually look at the availability. So awesome. in the bottom right, that nav bar, we can update this availability anytime. Uh, we have some some folks saying, let me go ahead and pull up one of these comments. Thank you so much. We're trying so hard. And as you guys can see, um, Grave, we really appreciate your comment. Listen, we are here. I am literally the CEO of this company. I do lives all the time. Kara is here. We want to make it better. So join us on Discord. Tell us what you think can be better. As you use it, do you find a bug, a button doesn't work, something's not great, let me know. We'll get it fixed. We work seven days a week on this thing. So thank you so much for that comment. We're trying really hard. It's going to be amazing on Friday. Yeah, Ken doesn't sleep, guys. He doesn't sleep. <laughs> I really don't sleep. It's going to, Carol, you wait. Like, watch these bags. You see these bags? They're getting bad. I don't know. Like, but I, I just know that I don't even have to set an alarm clock anymore. Ken's always ch -ch -ch spot on. I, it's, energy. Yeah. <laughs> Good and bad. <laughs> So back to schedule. So the idea here is whenever you're looking to like set your schedule, now this does not connect with your computer schedule. This is okay. only inside of Cupid. So kind of think of this as a um, schedule that's convenient for you. Matchmakers, clients, and singles are all asked to have a schedule. So let's say, Kara, I wanted to set my schedule for Wednesday, right? I'll pick a time that works for me. Let's say it's like 5 p.m. to, let's go 8 p.m. Got to go ahead and select this little 30. So select that, okay. And then I'll click save. And so what's gonna happen there is now whenever someone wants to book a meeting with me, these little 30 minute time slots will show up on my calendar. Same thing for your client, same thing for matches. All dates on Cupid are always 30 minutes and they'll show up as those little 30 minute pills. But Kara, you're spot on. We're very passionate about calendars and time just because we really respect our clients, You know sure. what they focus on doing. And as you can see, I'm going to show you real quick. We can actually set up um, more. Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> There's no button here. Cool. Uh, I was going to say we can actually set up some more schedules. You can obviously delete your schedule here too, but you can add some more. So that's the scheduling aspect. Awesome. So coming back to that nav bar, we have that dashboard. We've got the chat functionality. We already saw Stephen Sorrell. Now I wanted to finish off because I'm getting a little ADD here. So we talked about search, screen, and select, right? But we haven't talked about how you select. So you see this little arrow right in the middle of Steven's photo? That is your first look. Okay. Now, um, let me go ahead and respond to Kaylee's question real quick. Kaylee says, is there going to be some kind of safety process, ID verification, that singles can be required to ensure everyone's safety? So Kaylee, the answer to this is yes, but not yet. Here is the actual issue. Um, there's a lot of challenges with access to identification. So we did some trials um, and we have some test users, but not everyone has the same ID. Some people might use their library card. You'd imagine most people use their driver's license, but many people have it revoked, a DUI, you've had some kind of recidivism or there's been some kind of you know, legal action. There's all kinds of things that happen to stop you from having identification. It's not as easy of a problem to solve, but I really appreciate you asking it. The answer is we're trying to solve it and we're going to solve it in the future. But um, it is true that, that is, it is a really big challenge in the space is trying to have real ID verification. Right. Um, so let's keep going. Um, so the next thing is to actually share to do that selection. So search screen select. So Kara, let's say you really like Steven. You ended up having a chat with him and you just think he's a great match for your client, which you see your little client here when you click this button, Sam Sampson. When you press send, you're prompted with this little list. And what does it say? It explains to you exactly the process of how a first look works. Okay. One, your client gets to review the match and rate them and see, are they going to be a good fit for you? Number two, if your client likes the match, so if it's a yes, 
Then the match reviews your client. So kind of the same situation, right? Your match always gets the first look. Get it? That's where the name came from. Then the match gets to say, yes, I'm interested in your client. Finally, if they both like each other, Kara, in traditional matchmaking, what happens? Then Kara Bell has to go schedule a date, right? That's right. Kara Bell would schedule the date. Kara Bell would date sit. I would make all the arrangements. And uh, there goes my spare time on the weekends. <laughs> there goes every one of your Saturdays and Sundays, right? <laughs> the difference here is Cupid's going to do this for you. So we already talked about that scheduling element. So what happens is when your client says, yes, I want to meet this person I'm interested, and the match says, yes, I want to meet this person I'm interested, boom, they are delivered each other's schedule. Actually, that match will select a time from your client's schedule, and your client will confirm. The magic of this is neither of them saw what was really happening behind the scenes, and it makes it look pretty amazing. Kara made all this happen. Kara found the person. Kara got it coordinated, and the next thing they know, they have a date scheduled on their calendar. Now, here's something interesting, Kara. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and send this real quick. What do you think of this person? Hmm. The difference is they are not chatting. So if you know anything about swipe-based dating apps, as soon as you match with someone, you start this long chat, 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 and then the goal is always to get to an actual date, which rarely ever happens. They say that Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge have about a 5% success rate of meeting someone. So if you could imagine, out of every 100 people, not just you swipe on, that you connect with, only five of those will actually meet you in person. What a waste of time. <laughs> wow. So on Cupid, we obsess over your schedule, your client's schedule, and the actual single schedule. This is obviously not a hookup app. It's just not made for that. It's way exactly. too much time investment. It's way too much energy. This is the app for people who are interested and the platform people are interested in finding their person. So just, just saying that, I think, you know, taking time to really find quality individuals is key. You know, if you're trying to bring in singles of, of people that are on all the dating apps, like the Tinder people and the Bumble, it's probably not going to work because they're probably not like-minded and really wanting to be in a committed relationship. So I would just right. say, take some, some real thought behind who you are introducing, um, even as a single to the platform, because we really want to keep it quality. We, we don't we want do. to, to end up like, um, you know, we have to like filter through like, really, would you go out with this person? So like, if you wouldn't go out with the person yourself, don't invite them. Maybe don't invite them to Cupid. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So the next thing I want to show you guys, this little bell at the top, you see we have a little red dot on this bell. So that's your notifications. So this is where you're going to be able to see in real time, everything that's happening in the app. Um, so anything that you've ever done, anything that actually happens is in your notifications. So you can see that you actually asked Stephen a question. You can see that and you can see a link straight to it. So you can always go to your notifications to see what has happened. When you pop into the app, it's probably a good idea to hop into the notifications because, oh, look, we can see that one of the connections we made, one of those first looks, you got to see that there was a rating. I and you get to see there was a rating back. And even more importantly, mm. you as the matchmaker get some unique information. So what happens here is this is that first look experience where it says, do you want to go on a date with this person? whenever he was rating Kyle Hansen. Then there's a one through five stars of how well does this person match you? And over time, we'll start giving you those oh, ratings wow. to see if they're gonna be a great connection. But most importantly, obviously they have some fake text here. There's going to be a, what do you like about this person? And it'll explain. Let's see if we can find one that's a little better. Does this one have any actual language on it? Great. Um, so here we are. So this is private to the matchmaker. These are not shared with other people. So, you know, whenever your client shares like what I like and what I don't like, that's not shared with the other person. It's only shared with the matchmaker. Okay. Why do you think that is, Kara? Um, I, but, well, because I think it's subjective. What one person True. likes in someone um, is subjective. So I, yep. I just feel like it it could taint the whole tone, I think, of, of a person. Correct. If they saw that for each other, they would totally taint it. But here's the reason why we did it. Kara, we want to help you as a matchmaker get better every single time you match. So what this does is you now have a record of how Kyle feels towards Robert's profile. And more importantly, you know, you see that, like, what do they not like about this person? What do they like about this person? You get both sides of the equation. And that's oh, what's yeah. kind of beautiful, right? Well, so that's going to be helpful. That, that will oh, be yeah. helpful because... 
um, you want to know those little things about your client, like what they liked or what they didn't like. So that when you are searching for them in the future, you already know, oh, Robert told me he doesn't like, you know, this or he felt this Blogs, way. So this may right? not be a good fit for him. Precisely. And you can always look back at that too, because when you have a lot of clients that you're running through this a lot, if you're doing this as a full-time business, you might know your clients really well, but eventually it gets to be a lot. Thank you so much for that comment, guys. You're right. The ratings actually will really create a better solution over time. And of course, you want your clients to connect with these people pretty well. If your client keeps saying, you know, like, this are a one-star match for me, you're probably not doing a good job. And that needs to tell you matchmaker like hey i need to have a conversation with my client i need to get on the phone with them because i'm not doing this well so that's your notifications we have a few more pieces to get through and i want to i want to make sure you stay cognizant of time so okay. on this nav bar on the bottom we have the actual cupid logo right which is your dashboard we have our chat function we have our searching uh database so the entire directory that everyone has access to with the filters next is going to be your clients tab so what this is so think about your notifications that was that little bell icon that was all of your stuff, right? Now, let's go into Sam, one of our clients. We have access to everything our client has ever done on Cupid. So instead of having to ask your client, hey, did you rate Jackie? Yes, right. I did. Here's the rating. You don't have to follow up with them. You have complete visibility. Oh, you confirmed a date with Peter. Great. Amazing. That's so good to hear. You are not responsible necessarily to directly follow up with this person because Kara and the old matchmaking what did you do? Call, text, hey, how'd it go? What yep. happened? Oh my gosh, did you confirm that date? You have to reschedule that date. I mean, what That's a right. nightmare, exactly. right? Exactly. And so here, now we have full visibility into all of our clients. We have like complete wow. top-down visibility. So the idea here is matchmakers, if you want to do this as a full-time business, you're going to have to have a number of clients. Mm -hmm. We need. We are always here at Cupid trying to make it where you can have a more efficient client and matchmaker experience. The last thing we want is for it to be so hard that you can't actually have multiple clients on Cupid. So that is your client timeline view. Hopefully that's pretty logical. You can kind of pop this yes. up and pop it down, but it makes it really easy for you to see um, your clients. Now, Kara, we have the very last and most important piece. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Let me check for questions. So I'm checking the, um, the chat. While so you're checking the questions, I just wanted yeah. to say for a lot of people that don't really know the matchmaking business, this is incredible because what I want you guys to realize is that your clients both get to see, I'm sorry, your client and the match get to see photos of each other before. <laughs> This is not a blind date experience. This Nobody's going to be on edge wondering what their match looks like. Both people have to agree that, hey, this is somebody that I'm attracted to and I would love to get to know. That does not happen in the matchmaking world. For some reason, they want to keep it a secret and um, it's usually a blind date experience. So the fact that your client is actually saying, yes, I would love to meet this person is key. Yep. It's quality. And it also guarantees a success on your client side. So your right. job as a matchmaker, because we've reduced the price point way down to something so reasonable, your job is to search screen select. I mean, Kara, you could literally do this while watching Netflix. Yes. You could do yeah. it on your couch. You could do it in the break room. You could do it before bed. I mean, this business is not meant to be this sit down at a computer. We run it from your phone because it's convenient, right? Um, and I see some of the questions are actually getting answered by other people. So that's awesome. Um, to answer the question, we do not have a policy for shallow clients. You're going to get shallow, you know, people who are a little vapid, people who are a little superficial. It's always your choice. Let me respond, Tor. You don't have to accept every client. So that's one of the reasons why we really encourage you to meet with those clients first and work with people you like because they're paying you to do a service. It's your responsibility to do that service for them, but you don't have to say yes to every client, you know? Just remember that it's not a requirement there. And I think you, you'll kind of learn over time how to manage those clients. Um, it, we do it have may be a have, coaching opportunity down the road. Uh, it sure you, might. And that might be a really coach. great client for a higher price point too, because they require more of your attention and more exactly. of your interest. They, they we're going to talk about, yeah, we're yeah. going to talk about those higher price points on Friday. Um, okay. Ashley's question is, Kara, can you read that? Kara, is there a guide that would be suggest for a new matchmaker? I feel like I have a solid background in social work, but I'd like to increase my skill in matchmaking. 
I would be more than happy to have a conversation with you. And Ken is encouraging me to write a book. And I'm sure am. up on that. So um, anybody that has questions, I am more than happy to, you can just link me on Discord. I'm more than happy to um, talk with you over the phone and answer questions um, and help get you started. Because I'm yeah. telling you, you will love this. This will become your full-time job within a year. You can thank me later. <laughs> and Kara, I did read that book you suggested. There was, what is it, From from Fun to Profit? Is that what it was on Amazon? Um, I think it was think match something like that. Looking for what was the name of that? Is the name it's of it's something like matchmaking uh, fun to profit. So actually, I'll respond to you. I read the book that Sarah suggested. It's not great, honestly. Like it was telling me to like update my it was like my physical address. It's like telling me all about how I have to have like a business address and how much budget I should put in my sign. It listen, like it was a little antiquated. So Kara needs to write a book. That's basically what this is. Maybe Cupid will work with Kara and she'll write a book. But let me take it back to the app real quick, guys. If you don't have any more questions, um, Grave, I see your question. How can I download this app? The app will be available on Friday. So we will have a big launch party. Please join us. There's going to be merchandise giveaway. So lots of fun stuff on Friday. But I want to get to this last and most important piece of Cupid, which is actually this little, this little briefcase. And what this little briefcase is, is how to run your business. So... A CRM is a client relationship management system. It's basically how companies run their businesses. So Cupid built a very simple CRM for you. So you could see all the different profiles that you've ever looked at. You can keep track of all of your tasks in one place, sort them, change them around, you know, move, you know, it, you can filter them for who they're associated with. You can filter only, I only want to see the mediums. I only want to see the, the high, the critical things, you know, things that have been done, things that are not done. We've done all of this. These are, you can see all the tasks you've completed in the past. The reason here is we want you to run your business on Cupid. The last thing we want for you is to have to say, oh, well, you know, I've got to have five other apps open while I'm trying to run something. Why we built this as a mobile app, we want it accessible to everyone. And people can literally use it on your phone. Your client has the same experience. You run the same experience. It's real simple. Right. So the four pieces of the CRM, the one is history. So what this history is used for is, let's say last night, Kara, you were watching Netflix, you're hanging out, having a glass of wine, but you're also running your business. You reviewed over 100 profiles. You made some ideas, you did some things, you made some tasks, you made some notes, you made some lists. But those are all in individual individual singles profiles. So how would you find them later? That's the problem, right? Mm. Like, And you might say to yourself, oh, what was that girl's name? Trish, right? But well, where was she? There's so right, many Trish right. in the database. I've done that So before. the history... <laughs> Oh, of course you have. I mean, or have to go have, through right? and, and not even have a name, but like remember what she looks like and then have to scroll through 300 profiles or to, to find her picture. Yeah. Precisely. So what this does is let me, let me show you how it works. So we can actually go ahead and test this. So here we'll go to this little guy, right? Hamza Saeed. So we go to his profile. We can see this. And then we'll pop right back to our history. At the very top, there he is. So we actually wow. have a, a date-based history of all the profiles you've been to. And you can click on that profile to go right back to it. How oh my convenient. gosh. Oh my you know, you're, God. You're I really literally have trying to make you <laughs> trying to make it convenient for you. You've got her name, you have where she's at. So you have all the things that you'll need <laughs> to come back and see later what you missed. Next is tasks, which I think this is gonna be a really useful thing for you over time, guys. Kara's gonna talk a lot about being a successful matchmaker, accountability, scheduling time, making sure you're keeping up with yourself, right? Are you going to have a follow-up call with that client? Did you meet someone that might become a client in the future? Put a reminder to give them a call. You would be amazed how successful it will be when someone says, how about we do a call next week? And you say, no problem. And you follow up with them early next week and you call them. That shows that you're on your stuff. You know what you're doing. Uh, we got a few comments coming in. Da, 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 da. Bridget says, I'd like to verify somehow the application, the result, creating my profile on Friday. Um, Bridget, I'm sorry, uh, that's actually me. We're so busy, we've had thousands of applications. If you join the Discord, that's basically the whole process. So we absolutely welcome you. Join the Discord, as long as you received an email from Cupid, you're in, and you'll start this process on Friday when the app actually launches. Um, Genevieve says, how do we get the new client on the app while showing we are the ones who led them to there? Yes, you will have a unique link. We're gonna go over that on Friday. Um, the developers are literally fixing some things right now. I would show you here, but I can't because it's not working. <laughs> So I'll show you on Friday how that works, and it'll be it'll be live on Friday morning. 
you'll see a whole invite function. Genevieve, there's a whole beautiful invite function that works, I promise, but it'll get there. Um, Samantha, quick comment, says, I love it, makes our life easier to track people down. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, this business is really a volume-based business. Kara talks about that a lot, right? It's a numbers yes. game. You have to meet enough singles, you gotta have enough clients, you know, you have to be out there hustling and making business happen. That's what Cupid is for. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna pause from the comments and get to the last two pieces of today's training. So the next thing is notes. So, Kara, you know, you were going through some profiles and you made some notes to yourself to remember later. Wow, here we go. We have a note about Derek. Derek is into blondes, right? So we can pop right back to Derek's profile. Oh my god. load, you know, doesn't wanna load. <laughs> As you can see, the software is getting tested. Uh, I see. No, no, I'll make sure it works by Friday. Okay. So we can at least see a list of our notes, right? <laughs> awesome. And, and guys, I want to go ahead and caveat this, give you a big warning. Nothing is going to be perfect on Friday. We're going to, payments will work. You'll be able to subscribe to someone. All those pieces will, this looks really nice. If things break, go on Discord, reach out to me, tag Ken. We actually have two new channels. Um, there's some bug channels and some other things that say like, here's the issue, here's what went wrong. Let me know. The faster you tell me, the faster I can fix it. Um, we promise we will fix it. Please, whatever you do, if you go into the app store and give us a one-star rating, you are killing this business. Be aware of that. We require five-star ratings. We're right here to solve these problems. Where This is a very transparent business. But if someone gives us a one-star rating and our rating gets below four, we can actually be removed from the app store. Just be very aware of that as like understanding how important that rating is. Please don't take your aggression out on the app store. Talk to us. We're here on Discord. You talk, you see me all the time. So talk to us there. But Kara, this is for your notes. So when you made some notes on someone, maybe you actually met someone at brunch, you got them to sign up there at brunch and you made a note like, okay, Kara, I need to go talk to this person. Maybe it's not a task for you, but something specific. A great way to do this, Kara, is actually like whenever you're meeting someone and you show them a profile on Cupid, you know, you're trying to show what the experience looks like. And you say, oh, Jack really like this. If Jack becomes a client, I'm totally going to hit him up with this guy, right? Cool beans. The last piece is probably one of my favorite pieces, and that's called lists. Okay. So lists, this is going to help you make Kara's list. Every matchmaker's list will be different, right? You're going to put different clients and different prospective mm -hmm. matches in different lists. What does right. that mean? Well, as you're going through a database of tens of thousands or millions of singles, you're going to find people as you filter down and we're going to find solutions to, you know, over time, I can promise you, Kara, we're going to deliver you profiles that make good sense for your clients. We're going to start automating this and making it as good as possible. Right now, it's actually very manual, but we're going to get there. So um, I can actually go to someone. Let's actually go back to the database and add someone new to our list. So let's say we have Anthony Schwartz here. So we like Anthony. Anthony's a really good fit for one of our potential clients. I just goes on the Cassidy list. So we click add. And what that means is we can go back and go to our CRM and we'll see Cassidy's list here later. So now we have his profile. We know who he is and we can go add him. We can go find him again. The biggest piece here is efficiency. If you're going to sit down for a whole hour and go through all of these different pieces, go through all these profiles, do all this screening, you don't want to lose your work. That's right. the biggest piece. Right. This job right. is not actually rocket science. Our job here at Cupid is how do we how do we help you in understanding how it works? So I Kara, love that it, it, because that that was a, a big problem for me is losing sure. my spot. Like I'd be in the middle of my groove one night, I'd be exhausted, so I would shut down. And then when I woke up the next day, it was like I, there was no benchmark of what I had sure. done from the night before. So. I'm starting off scratch again. So what um, did you do? I mean, how would you even have seen what your clients did either? Right. You literally exactly. have to, cause you were doing it all manually. So you'd have to call them and say, okay, did it work? Like, did you actually respond to them? Do you start texting? I mean, there's so much manual work that went into matchmaking. No wonder the price was so high yeah. because in traditional matchmaking, you could not handle or manage more than a few clients. You know, it wasn't possible. And then, Kara, as we'll remind everyone, in traditional matchmaking, you had to have your own database. So imagine you get five clients and imagine those clients all expect maybe a match a week, maybe two a month. Well, now you better have a hundred singles that have updated mm -hmm. profiles that are right, that are interesting. I mean, it was an impossible challenge before. Matchmaking was impossible. Now it is not with Cupid. It's very difficult. 
and very just time consuming and right. frustrating from the client's perspective because they never got to see a photo of their match. <laughs> it's like they had no uh, say in it whatsoever. They hired me. Right. Okay, fine. I'll find you someone. And and you know, as much as the the human components or the emotional components and characteristics are important, there is that element of initial attraction. If it ain't there, there, it ain't there. There's, right. there's you can't wrap it up and pretty it up and say, well, oh gosh, do you think she could become, you know, attractive to you? Like, it, right, wrong, or indifferently, there is that element of human nature where we are visual people and we want to see attractive people. Right. And attractive to us. Right. And I think one of our jobs as matchmakers to just keep our clients curious, you know, your client is single for a reason. Either they've gone through relationships, they've been through divorces, they've, they're they're picky, they're specific. They want something, you know, Kara, I always talk about my story. I really want children. And as a gay man, that's hard. It's expensive. The world is getting more expensive. Logistically, Kara, believe it or not, it's not easy for me to make a baby. Take some work, take some time, take some energy, money. right? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. I mean, Kara, would you believe on average it can cost anywhere from fifty to a hundred thousand dollars just to get pregnant? IVF. So wow. so you know, there's a reason why your client is single. And I'm not telling you to push back on your client and tell them you have to take these matches. This is all this is the best I could find for you. No, you just need to keep your client's expectations reasonable, right? And if they don't work, fire them. It's up to you. It's your business. There's a lot of other matchmakers out there that can kind of deal with their stuff. If you can't service them, you're going to find people who want to work with you, but who aren't a great fit. That's okay. You're on Cupid. You're going to be able to pick and choose your clients. Um, so that's the whole presentation. I'm going to go ahead and kind of look at the comments and just see if we've got any other comments for Friday. I am so excited, guys. I'm, I'm going to reference a few few questions that I saw. Um, okay. So Fly says, uh, hey, T oh, Tiff, sorry. Tiff says, do we as matchmakers need to pay anything for monthly fees? No. So the only person that pays on Cupid is a client when they subscribe to you, Tiff. Let's be clear. This is not an MLM. There's no pyramid scheme. There's no sharing of percentages. But we are a revenue share model. And what that means is it's super honest and transparent. So you get 80% of the revenue. Cupid gets 20. We run your entire system. We're constantly delivering you new matches and new leads. We do all the work on the back end to mm -hmm. make your business successful. And you make 80% of it. Never any split of fees or anything else. There's So we're not an MLM. And thank you, Ashley, for defending us. Um, we were really worried about that. The yeah. reason I want to let, Kara, let me actually talk on why it's 80% and not, we didn't just say like $20 and $80. Right. So the reason why, and through Kara's suggestion was, we know our prices are super competitive. It's one of the reasons we're going to be so successful. Think about it. You know, when something's a good deal, people talk about it. People are willing to try it, Right. This is a way better way to date in a super new experience. So we're going to get a lot of attention there, but we had to be a competitive price. Mm -hmm. But we also understand that some clients are going to be difficult, have high expectations. They need more of your time. They want a higher level of service. So we're going to open up pricing towards the new year. And we'll have some more announcements on Friday on the launch day. But how that pricing will open up, the pricing will actually range from $99 a month all the way up to $2,000 a month. And you can have that on your profile at different pricing tiers. You get to choose what you offer. Cupid doesn't change very much. The system is actually pretty similar. There might be a few more things we add in at the higher pricing points. But you as a matchmaker get to control what you're offering and how you're unique, right? A great example is relationship coaching. Maybe you decide that your relationship coaching is, I don't know, $150 an hour, right? And so one of the pricing tiers might be $600 a month. And that includes two hours or three hours of coaching per mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. up to you right and includes their cupid experience as well you, what you will hear and what's really important to me is that we are really against the idea of paying per match that in the conventional matchmaking system that's how it worked you'd pay anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars per match here's why that doesn't work quantity and quality are not connected so right. we don't want you as a matchmaker being financially incentivized to send someone on more dates when it's not a good fit and vice versa. We don't want you as a matchmaker to be punished or your client to be punished financially for taking risks, trying it with someone, right? The beauty of this is what is your client really agreeing to a voice or a video call? It's not that scary. You know, they don't have to leave their house. They can turn their camera on or off. They can do it all via the app. They don't have to share their personal information. So the risk is low. The convenience is high. We want them to be willing to take risks if they want that. 
Your job is not to tell your client, hey, go on three dates a week. No. Right. right. The important piece is we do want to have that open mind and be willing to try these things out. Um, Kara, mm-hmm. we have five more minutes. I'm going to go ahead okay. and throw one more question out there. So do we have methods catfishing. to prevent catfishing? This is a great question. So what we have right now is we have a single authentication. We are soon going to have dual authentication, which will be an email and a phone number. Those will have to be connected. What that does is that forces you to not keep creating new accounts if you get banned or you do something inappropriate. Finally, and we'll see you later, Ashley. I see Ashley is saying she's got to go. Oh. Sorry, guys. We, we did take the whole hour today. Um, but to answer your question about the catfishing, we are definitely going to create real ID verification. But as you can imagine, as you can see with Twitter and like the drama there, it's not as easy as we'd like it to be. So I, I would gonna, say. I think they'll find out pretty quickly if somebody's catfishing, because if you are, you know, as a matchmaker, you're reaching out to this prospective client and they are, they're either they're not responding or mm. for they don't show up on their video day and we get notice of that, then we're going to know that, okay, maybe we need to say what's going on here. So you'll, Correct. I think you'll kind of have some indications uh, before that would even happen. Also, um, I will say guys, we have all kinds of checks and balances in the actual Cupid system. So let's say someone doesn't show up to two dates. They'll be actually put on probation. They don't show up to three dates in a row. They're off the platform. So we don't want to have profiles. Like if you imagine how Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge work, all these profiles, they could have been created three years ago, five years ago. It doesn't have anything to do with whether they logged in or not. Cupid is not meant for that. Cupid is a business. We are meant to serve you up people who've been on recently, who are active singles and active clients on the Cupid space. So trust and believe. Um, Thank you very much for the question. We're working on it and we're going to work to make sure we track how often someone logs in. We track if, hey, if there was a flagged date, you know, the, the person, your client goes on a date with someone and the person under that video does not match, they should absolutely hang up, flag it and report it to Cupid. We'll get that profile taken down immediately. A lot of it's going to be manual in the beginning, but we'll get better over time. So we're here to make sure the community of Cupid stays safe, catfish free, and very honest. And you guys are bringing in, you're recommending the singles and your clients. So right. if you got people in here catfishing, it comes all back on you. Like right. you're the person that brought this person in the system. So you must have known that they weren't real. So well, just that that's the best uh, preventative measure of catfishing is that it, you're accountable for bringing people in. And we'll know it really is. Right. And, and also yeah. do your job as a matchmaker, right? Ask questions. If this person didn't respond to your questions, like the worst case scenario of what you could do, you see a profile, you think they're really attractive, you send it to your client immediately. Well, you didn't really screen at all, did you? No. Or what's worse is, you know, what <clears throat> what I hate about like apps like Hinge, especially when you pay for them, for some reason, they want to send you so many matches, but they disregard your basic needs. So again, like I'm a gay person, right? But if I were to open up the Hinge dating app, which I pay for because it's market research, um, it shows me women all the time. And what that is, that could happen, right? You could be working with a client and they say like they're not interested in having children or they, you know, or they're not interested in marriage. And you see this person's like goals are they have children and they want marriage and they see that match. and They're going to be like, matchmaker, like you didn't even review this. You didn't screen it. You're not doing your job. So your job is not a volume-based experience. It's always customer service. How are we helping our clients be happy and make sure we've done the screening on this person? Have we actually screened this match? Or are we just shooting off at random? Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to throw out one more question. We got one more minute, Kara. Do you have anything you want to add, Kara, before I do this question? No, just that everything is going to be documented in timeline in the app, too. So, I mean, that's always a, a, it's just going to be great. It keeps, yeah, it's nice and transparent. it keeps the matchmakers accountable, right? Sure um, does. Like the, the app knows if you're working, if you're really sure screening does. people or if you're just sending over profiles. So don't just send over profiles because it'll come back to bite you. Well, you'll also get negative ratings over time, right? Yeah. And then who wants to work with a matchmaker who has a two-star rating? You're not going to be successful long-term. So right. be very defensive of like your clients, your experience. Make sure your clients are happy. If your client's not happy, yeah. it's okay. They can let you go. They can unsubscribe. It doesn't have to be a negative experience. Right. I'm going to go ahead and answer this last question. Then I'm going to let everyone go. That was a full hour. We got a lot done. <laughs> Do not forget, Friday, 1 p.m. EST, we are all getting together. and We're going to have a big launch party. Kara and I have lots of surprises, so we're super excited. But we're going to answer this last question. It says, as a matchmaker, do you have to find clients or will they be provided through the company? So 
the initial answer is you are responsible for your own business. That's the beauty of Cupid. Sorry, we have spam comments. We love when we get spam comments. Ugh, so annoying. Okay. Right. So the answer is you are responsible for your own clients. Um, this is your business. We give you 80% because you're doing the work. You're finding the clients. You're doing the actual management and maintenance of these clients. But because we share this revenue, Cuba gets 20%, you get 80%. I can promise you, we are building tools and services to drive attention. I wouldn't be surprised that if we hit our goals in 2024, there is a Cupid Super Bowl commercial. We are going to work very, very hard at driving lots more attention, and you are going to be rewarded for the more singles you bring to the platform and the better you do as a matchmaker. You'll be seen higher in the matchmaker directory. You'll actually show up on singles dashboards. There's gonna be so many positive things that help you get more business for doing your job. So the answer is yes, you're responsible for finding your own clients. And I'm actually gonna make an announcement on Friday about some special privileges once you hit a certain number of clients. But let's leave everything for Friday, Kara. I'm gonna get back to work and make sure all these buttons actually work like I promised. All right, I got some work to do on my end as well, getting ready for yes, my you clients, do. so yes. All right, everybody, we'll see you back on Friday. We will be in the Android and the uh, Apple App Store on Friday. Thank you very much, Kara, for all your time and energy, and we'll see you at launch day. See you Friday.